Welcome to Rift Breaker. My name is Neil Lars and today we're going to do something different. We are going to do a 10 things you maybe don't know about the mechanics in Rift Breaker. So I've been playing this for quite a bit and I've found a few things that I think are maybe not explained necessarily as good as they could be. So here are my uh, my findings that I hope you will enjoy. If you do, hit the like button of course and if you have more that might not be obvious then leave them in the comment below and i'll put them into a follow-up video as we find more things so let's get on with it the first thing is obviously as you can see here we are running on concrete you are faster on concrete than you are on uh, on normal ground uh, to the tune i did some speed test it looks like 20 percent faster on uh, on concrete so it doesn't seem like much but it also has the added added bonus of just making it look so much nicer more like a factory and not less like a random location the second tip actually takes place in here in the control settings controls this is by the way a really nice way of demonstrating the controls in the meet in immediately but there's more you can add your own controls here there are a lot of things that are unbound and uh, like all the buildings and you can bind them here, which I think is super neat. You can also just add more here. For example, the floor racer. I had to add that one. The one thing though, for some reason, the, uh, uh, where is it? Let's, no, oh, no, 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 Zoom game. For some reason, it is not possible to do the decoration. And I would love to be able to do the concrete. That would be really nice, but not really possible yet. But uh, it does make it a lot easier, neat neater then you can just switch easily between these different settings and you can bind things that you find you're using quite a lot so do go in there and figure out if the things that you bind you use a lot if you should give them some dedicated key bindings and the next tip is maybe it's obvious maybe it's not but uh, when you build buildings here they always build as uh, level one and of course once you build them you can upgrade them but there is also the alternative if you look at the uh, hologram yeah, now it's gone. That was not what I wanted to show. Then if you hold, press Alt, it changes to a higher level. It changes to the highest possible level you have at any given time. That means you don't have to build and upgrade, but you can build the, uh, the highest upgrade immediately instead of doing that upgrade. Also, if you upgrade, you will upgrade them one tier. While if you do this, you can upgrade them all the way up to uh, maximum tier. The next thing is about weapons. Obviously, you can shoot two different weapons at the same time holding both buttons down but there is a, just a little hint about it i've seen so many people also because there's an achievement for running around with two miniguns if you run to, with two miniguns you are going to consume the same resources same materials and that means you will be running out twice as fast so my recommendation is always get two different ammo types and if we look at the different ammo types you can see here if you hover over it this has the plasma weapons this has small caliber this has mm, i guess large caliber this has grenade types rocket types so for example a grenade launcher and a rocket launcher don't really match very well because they um they're using the same so try to come up with different things that use different items such as plasma plus rail plus uh, minigun plus uh, burst rifle or something like that the next uh hint here our tip is about our core buildings and by core buildings i mean the ones that are in this menu here and uh, there are for example the armories it's very easy to just build an armory and go like yep i built an armory but actually what i have here i have a level one and i have a level three so there is a difference between a level one and level three they um look at this uh, the consumption is obviously a lot higher for the level threes and you don't get a whole lot of additional value but you still get value and it's i would say since the energy is not much and the carbonium and ironium is pretty much cheap then always upgrade these to keep them going as fast as possible or get them as good as possible likewise if we look over here by the com stations we can see a comes come level one is uh, giving us download speed of one and using 50 energy while a level four is giving us the download speed of four and using 400 energy so again disproportionately more energy but then again this is the only way and then the number of buildings are is, is capped always build the maximum number always do the maximum upgrade but there's another building here that's also constrained that you also need to uh, upgrade to as the maximum possible level that is over here here we have the ammo storage now this is kind of 
one of those, you build some ammo stores, you go like, yep, I have some ammo stores. No, 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 no. You want to build all the ammo storage as you can. And if you... And you can't build anymore because it's limited to 12, probably four times the number of, uh, of armories. But, and you can also upgrade these. So you can see here the amount of caliber, the amount of, of ammo that this one can store is a lot. And that is, that's kind of your, your point because when you are using stuff like a minigun and you're just absolutely spamming it, you really want to make sure that you have a good good amount stored so that when you go from one to the other then basically when you're in an extended fight you're not going to run out and also make sure that that's why the armories it comes back faster when you're when you're done so really get always get the maximum number of ammo buildings and also upgrade them at, to the maximum level something that's not constrained is the tower ammo factory not a constrained thing, building, so you can build as many of those as you like, but I'd also recommend building some of them because, well, it also sucks in a big attack that your towers are running out. So keep that in mind. The next hint is all about out here in the world. We are going to do some uh, some mining. So what are you going to do? You are going to build a mining operation here. You take your Ironium factory and you put it down here with takes one Ironium ore and 20 energy and then it gives you one Ironium. That's awesome. Let's get one of those. Except if we press the alt button as we learned earlier, then you can see that I get a level three because that's what I've researched right now. And that gives, still uses one Ironium ore and 80 energy, but then it gives four Ironium. It's not like a 10% bonus. It's not like a 20 or 50%. It is a times four bonus. So that means you want all your my, your factories, Aronium factories to be upgraded and also Carbonium and Rare Resource factories to be upgraded to the maximum at as fast as possible. And on top of that, it also means that research into these is probably something you want to prioritize. So when you get to the next uh, HQ level, then take a look and see if you can get the next one. Uh, where is it? That one. Get the next one because they are pretty damn good. So that is a recommendation. Get that done as fast as possible and get it all the way up as well. The next tip for you is all about solar panels and energy storage. So it did take a bit of calculation to get all of that right. And uh, so I'm going to present it to you also with the, the facts so that you can do your own math and check it on by yourself. Each day is down here is 12 minutes long. And uh, if you look at each second, then each two minutes here is one second. And uh, what it actually does is that that means that it takes 720 seconds to a day, like real seconds to a day. And if we look at this, these are at level one, they are putting outputting 20 energy per second. That means it takes 500 seconds to fill up the fill up a single storage because each storage here has 10,000 units. So 500 out of the 720, you would think that would actually work. But the thing is, as you can see right now, the solar panels are shut down because they don't work at night. Surprise, surprise. They It actually is that they, they start up at 8 a.m. and they end at 9 p.m. So that means they have 13 hours, uh, in-game hours, or in, uh, in proper units in seconds, 390 seconds of active time. So that means one solar panel cannot, can during a day not fill up a... Uh, as an accumulator but then again the stuff that it can fill in can easily support during the night but if you want to have a good ratio so that if you have exclusive solar panels and accumulators or let's call them storage right energy storage then you want to have approximately five solar panels to four storage units and that will give you make sure that the solar panels will during the day fill up entirely into the accumulators so that at night they will discharge and, uh, and that should also be good. Another way of looking at it is that the inactive period is 330 seconds long. So if you want to do some math, then you can look at your current burn ratio, 2,500 in my, my time, and then go by saying if that's constant over the 330 seconds, that means it will during the night burn through 800,000 energy. Right, so that means in this case, this storage unit is enough for supporting, as long as it's fully stored, the yellow bar here is full during the day, then it will actually uh, be just fine during the night as well. So that is just a few, uh, few simple math you can do. So if you take 
<laughs> summarizing again, you take this number, assuming it's constant during the night, and multiply it by 330, and then you get you see if that's more or less than your total storage. If it's uh, more, then you probably have a problem during the night. If it's less, then you might not be okay during the night. So that is uh, definitely really nice to know, sort of when you are balancing solar panels and accumulators with each other, on uh, on particularly on planets where that's the primary way of getting power. For the next hint, I will uh, have jumped over to another world of mine, so really illustrate the point that I want to do, and that is all about the portals, the rift portals. If we look at them, you might think that they cost something. They cost 25 carbonium and they take no upkeep. You need to build more of them. I don't care how many you have, you need to build more of them. Yeah, build more of them. They're instant transport and they don't take power and they basically are free. So get them everywhere, everywhere. So that when you get a, there is a comet landing nearby, you are already there. And if you get a, uh, there's a large critter that spawns, you're already there. So definitely get more portals, no matter how many portals you have, get more of them. They're so damn cheap and so incredibly useful. Following along with this, there is another hint that uh, it is maybe not obvious, but looking at this, it should become obvious. Why the hell do I have so many radars? Well, units don't respawn inside radar coverage. So if you plop down a radar, whenever you're doing a, a mining outpost, then you won't have any response. Of course, the edge uh, attacks will still happen, but you will never get attacked by just random critters who are just standing around. And that means that we are now safe here and we can move out once we have, in this case, I have the entire map covered by radars. Eh, maybe there's a little glip down here. That means they can spawn out here. But generally, I have uh, pushed back everything and I've uh, put, ra put radars everywhere. That means that I am now safe from uh, respawn on this map. I think that's a pretty neat thing to uh, to just have that safety. For the next hint, it's all about combining the last two hints. The fact that respawns don't happen in radar coverage, the fact that rift portals don't uh, don't cost anything means that, and here comes the, the big surprise, don't defend resources. I just def don't defend them. And uh, that means in the absolute worst case scenario, which is exactly what we have here, we get an invasion coming in from multiple sides. We're pretty far into the game, so these are absolutely destroying everything. What's going to happen is that they will start attacking these locations and they will sort of find their way. I will engage one, one of these uh, attack forces, and the other ones will just start munching on our base. At this point, it really doesn't cost much to set them up. And if I lose three, four, five, seven of these locations, I don't care. The rest of them will be, will be fine and they might make their way to the, my base, which is a bit more defended. So that is basically where I uh, I want to say this. So just when you go out, build this, drag a power line. You know there's nothing, nothing roaming coming going to get there because you have radar coverage, you have rift portals if that something happens. And uh, when things spawn, well, we are ready to go. We can uh, head out and we can start laying out some of our defensive maneuvers uh, here and just start preparing for it with all the stuff that we have at this point. So we are now ready to to face them as they come in. That is a really, really important thing to do in, uh, in, in this case. And you can get so much more resources so much faster if you don't care about defending them, obviously. So let's uh, just enjoy the, uh, the attack force that's coming in because that is definitely gonna happen here. And I will just absorb the majority of it right here and then move on to the next objective afterwards. No tutorial without having a good amount of just random random biter killing, right? And just a little follow up on my last point. As the dust has settled, I have lost a total of one, two, three locations. That's it. And that was a massive, massive attack that came in. And uh, so because of that, I just don't think there's any point to spending a lot of time on doing uh, doing defenses on, on perimeter defenses. And that leads me into the last point. 
And before my final point, if you are enjoying uh, these things and have learned a few things, then uh, consider subscribing if you're new to the channel and hitting the like button as it helps me. And of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you have other tips and tricks, then leave them in the comment below. Then maybe I can do another video uh, with additional hints. And of course, I would credit you with uh, coming up with these hints if it's something that's new and innovative that we haven't heard about. Cool. So the last hint is uh, specific to the campaign and uh, using the fact that we don't defend our locations. What you can do here, you build a small outpost that's just enough to power everything. And then you do the trick about building out outposts as crazy out here. And here is the trick. Whenever you're on here on a planet, then regularly there will be the announcement about something that's coming in and uh, attacks. And those attacks can be quite, quite troublesome. So the point is, when you're on a on a outpost planet, you go out, you tap as many resources as possible, and then you get the hell out of there. And that's it. Because when you are not here, you cannot be attacked. That means no random volcanoes or earthquakes or ionic storms or big biters or biter attacks or any of those things that just make it make you less productive here. So you can set it up as long as it works. As soon as you leave, and go back to your home planet then then the rest will continue and you then once in a while as you can see i haven't been here for a long time because a lot of things are running up. see this is exactly what happens that's exactly what happens if you spend time on the planet suddenly you need to deal with the tax and that is not something we want to do on an outpost world so spend as little time as possible on the outpost world in the campaign mode so that you don't get these random attacks because i'm just hanging around in my base Maybe that's a bit uh, meta gaming or game mechanics, but uh, I think that's something that you're going to outpost, you're being effective, get the hell out of there, go back to your main base, which should be better defended. <laughs> or maybe it's not. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, take care, and as always, stay effective.